You know, I think enough time has passed for me to talk about this, with well, the spoilers and all the other bullshit that's happened. But just for the ones who haven't seen it yet and they do mind this, spoiler warning. And also as another warning, if you do find some possibly offensive jokes or certain opinions to be disturbing, I'd advise leaving this video before you shit yourself. Also, I could be wrong with plenty of things that come out of my mouth, so don't take every word I say as 100% correct. But moving on, summing up this movie in just a couple of words, it is just downright breathtaking. Now when I say that, it isn't Marvel movie quality with all the budget in the world and a bunch of top-notch effects and the like, that's an extreme comparison, but you gotta give it a bunch of credit. It's some solid stuff. The animations are smooth, voice acting is beautiful, the pacing is great, man, I can't complain about anything with this movie. Not that I really have a right to as a full-grown-ass adult. And the main cast of characters shown, Sunny, Izzy, Hitch, Pip, and Zip, all five of them are great characters thus far. And some comparisons of how these new characters are similar to the Generation 4 ones are pretty easy to spot. Sunny is Twilight, Izzy is Pinky, Hitch is Fluttershy, ish, Pip is Rarity, and Zip is Rainbow. But poor Applejack, unless maybe she's similar to Hitch, like a combo, like Hitch being a combination of Fluttershy and Applejack or something? I don't know, that's just a guess. But starting from the top, the scene with the main six was actually a refreshing sight. Sort of like a transition from Generation 4 to Generation 5, except extremely quick for a transition, and probably arguable. But still nice nonetheless. Following that up, we get to see some of the main cast, and man, there was a lot more disbelief about magic than I expected. And I can't imagine it was easy for both Sunny and her dad to be surrounded by all that oppression, albeit not forceful oppression, but still discouraging in a way. Though the father and daughter scenes were adorable. Time passes by just in the blink of an eye and we get to see adult Sunny. Sucks that he's gone though. And the first song, bro, it's pretty damn catchy. Visuals, vocals, it's real peppy, even with the somber moment during the midst of it, but it's still great. By the way, the little sway that Sunny does here is just so smooth. Then we finally get a good look at that handsome hitch all grown up. And I'm a little surprised that with his charismatic yet stern demeanor, he wasn't able to convince Sonny all those years, and especially not today. But Sonny seems to be similarly charming as much as he is, so it's like fire fighting fire. Though I wonder how he's able to charm up animals so easy, because he even got no idea. He could somehow be related to Fluttershy in a way, maybe? Yeah, at this point, who knows? And then Sprout, the bold and noble deputy. I'll give it to him though, he does have determination while with chasing Sonny across town. And moving on to the scene with the factory, it's real satisfying and almost fulfilling to see how many advancements have been made as time went on in this Equestria. And sure, there have been representations of factories in the previous generation, but this is a whole new level of tech. Music kicks on, he's about to shake his ass, and the presentation begins. You know, from how much Earth ponies hate unicorns and pegasi, especially from that long period of time, one would think that Phyllis or her little development team, or whoever comes up with these products, would create more protective or fast-acting stuff rather than a cute little helmet or a slime catapult. Or, well, actually, the slime catapult was actually effective in a sense. And Jesus, those balloons are effective at quick evacuations, but who left that open? After embarrassingly getting kicked out of Canner Logic, Sunny and Hitch have a serious talk. But I feel bad for Sunny, though, because ever since her childhood, apparently she's only ever had Hitch and Sprout, maybe, as her only friends for her whole life. So losing a handsome guy like him, ooh, that's, that's a big hitter. Aw, we got a sad Sunny. Then a curious Sunny. Then a knocked out Sunny, and then a happy Sunny. Only for a little while anyways, up until all hell breaks loose. Yeah, Phyllis, stare at her menacingly, that'll surely intimidate her. But this thing actually does. However, that doesn't stop Sunny from freeing her and sealing the deal that she's now a criminal. Seriously, who puts a big red button on there? And Hitch didn't even look like he wanted to try and stop her. He must have been so intimidated. After the long run back to the lighthouse, Sunny gets a good look at Izzy. A real good look at it. Alright, I'll stop. I just love the reactions that they have with each other though, the wonder, excitement, all of that is just adorable. But then Hitch and Sprout completely surround Sunny's home, interrupting the curious questions that she had for Izzy. You know, you'd think for a large town like Maritime Bay, there'd at least be, I don't know, like five or six extra people to enforce the law? Nothing too much. But no, they just rather leave that big city for just the two of them. But it's not like they can't handle it, or at least one of them can't handle it. But I'd imagine having a couple extra hands or hooves would be quite nice. Ah, oh, Sprout, you're a card. When they medium sneak out of Dodge, we get a true reveal that unicorns think Earth ponies smell. Or don't have magic, that, that's the main thing, not the smell thing. Only one option is left for those two, and it's to go to Zephyr Heights to see if they got magic. And this leads to another catchy and fun little song on their journey. Yo, Uno? <laughs> and damn, the vocals here are good. Back at the Sheriff's Department, Hitch plans to go after Sunny and Izzy like the true heroic man that he is. 
Though he was so quick on leaving the whole town up to sprout like that. You gotta imagine that simply saying, Just try not to start a war while I'm gone, okay? Won't really work well for a guy like this. Paid off mortgage. You know, I can't tell if he still lives with his mom or if he's got some financial stuff that needs fixing. Either that or he simply just hasn't paid off his mortgage yet. Ah oh man, he wishes he could be as smooth as itch. Crossing this ravine, I think? Sunny and Izzy talk about a sparkly topic, but get cut off by a spooky figure in the fog. Understandably, it frightens them enough to haul ass up the rocks and out of the fog. Dude, that can't be healthy. That's gotta hurt like shit. Either your head, or your horn, or your spine. Then we finally meet Zipstorm. But why all the tricks and moves? Trying to show off or intimidate or something? I mean, she does it well enough to do both. Zip getting scared off, the pair of travelers cross paths with a pair of guards, and they get apprehended harshly by sticking a ball on Izzy's horn. Damn, that is so brutal. After being shushed by one of the guards in fear of these two innocent souls being spies, they get a grand look at the most advanced city thus far, Zephyr Heights, and it's gorgeous of how they modeled the buildings, adverts, bridges, everything. The spin-offs of certain brands and names such as Sony being Pony or T-Mobile being Sea Heights, it's a nice sprinkle of goodness. A little bit corny here and there, but it still brings a smile onto your face nonetheless. After the news anchors are done, we see Pip, the beauty princess with a big fan base and a knack for streaming and social media. Legit though, I love how much she's into social media, and same with the whole populace in general. You know, considering how many of us are in one way or another, it's just relatable and it adds that little nice spice that just feels right. After the grand walk to the castle, we finally meet the queen, a cotton ball dog, a big fluffy marshmallow, a pillow pet, or wait, no, it's the actual queen, Queen Haven, and her two daughters. And she is none too pleased with seeing non-Pegasi here. And she even went as far as confiscating Sonny's book too, Jesus, like, what can you do with a book? I suppose one could write down a few notes that they shouldn't, or throw the book as a weapon, but that's really about it. What else could go wrong today? Oh, how could you cover a handsome face like that? Come on. But actually, a horde shows up in front of the sheriff's office, and Phyllis convinces her son that he's gotta do something. No, not that. And then this song. It's, uh, it's, it's a unique one. Very unique. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad song or it's a sin against God, but it's just unique. Would you ever wear that perfume? I wonder if they got a cologne version. And it's Zip again. And hey, she saved the book from being incinerated or something. Or just laying in a whole pile of dust. But before she could even break these two out, Pip comes in for some free content. Oh, she's so very smooth and sincere. That is a strong vibration for a phone. Either that or it's another vibration for something- Okay, I need to stop. So, once Zip successfully breaks these two out after Pip is out of sight, she takes them somewhere super special. The sun. No, wait, no, it's Hitch. Man, all he has to do is just grunt, and then all these little fluffy rabbit bunnies just come following after him. Or many other animal, really. Litter. He sees way too much litter for his own health, I'd imagine. Very interesting tactics to follow a trail. A very meaningful and inspirational speech occurs, along with some help and convenience, before Hitch finally reaches his destination. Sort of. Afterwards, Zip gives Izzy and Sunny a nostalgia trip of sorts when they get inside this little time capsule room. Well, when you look at it closer, it's more than just a room. Maybe an atrium-ish? I know this is just a picture, but I just can't resist poking at it a little bit. Because damn, look at their spines. I mean, scoliosis hit different these days, I bet. But poor Zip. I can only imagine how long she's been holed up in here and just wishing for a magical flight to be a reality. Once the trio eventually find out that a gem needs to be put together with another gem to make the ultimate Minecraft gem, they plan a small heist of sorts. Once you produce the decoy, get your she is a god at arts and crafts. It's a lie. Zip is a realist and I love that. We've seen it just a little bit ago, but there's no sugarcoating things whatsoever with her. Though that may also have to do with all the frustrating years of living that lie, and after all that time, you know, it's a little bit hard to keep that in. Huh. Then we got the next song, or at least parts of what Pip is singing, and it's pretty fitting for her. The highs and lows all fit in just the right ways. Sunny finally swaps the crown out from Haven in turn for causing Izzy a few spinal injuries, but that dog is very attentive. Hey man, it's a good song, no one will blame you. With the show pretty much compromised beyond all hell, I mean seriously, what the hell was the technician thinking? They escape without a gem and leave behind poor Pip in the spotlight. Though if it wasn't for her, they wouldn't get it back, so it all worked out. A good bit of convincing later and it makes a whole team of five. Even if it's mostly out of reluctance. Cutting to what's happening back in Maritime Bay, Sprout had definitely been playing too much Hoi 4 or Star Wars. 
Oh yeah, he's getting a big hit, all right. How did he even get the approval of all this? Back in Beautylands, the five mostly friends successfully escaped Zephyr Heights to get to Bridalwood. Two of them ain't too happy about it, though. But hey, three beats two. Did I just agree with the Pegasus? Yes, you did. That bad was creating an unhealthy power dynamic. Izzy's just great. Man, Izzy thinks and does things with her head quick. So quick that she was able to make her way to the other side before the others really lost their shit. Izzy got so much talent. Nice. Can he not do that? Or is he just too used to playing with a stick all day? Alright, I need to stop. With some heartfelt words to get hitched back with all the rest of the group, Izzy soon reveals a heartwarming thing. It's the message that Sunny and her dad made all those years ago, when her dad was still around. Oh, bless his soul. With some assumed rest, all five of them made it to the magical entrance of Bridalwood. But Izzy's place certainly is magical in comparison to the rest of the forest, no doubt about that. I so wish I had live streamed that. Well, at least there's a next time for that. This? This right here, this is perfection. Transitioning to possibly one of the most popular songs in the movie, this one, oh my god, it is just perfect. Hitch and Sunny even tag in, adding on to the variety and quality, it's amazing. In the Izzy rap too, man, oh, highlight of the whole thing right there. Once they all fit right in, we get a grand look at how eventful Bridalwood is. It's very eventful, especially with this. What? Making their way to what appears to be a tea shop, we actually see someone that isn't as sad as the rest of the town. Technically, he is sad in a sense, he just doesn't have a monotone voice. Then Alpha Biddle is introduced. The big man himself of serving drinks and winning games is intimidating, but not so much for Sonny. This is the start of Sonny's gambling addiction. The first two rounds of Just Prance, love the plan words by the way, went as great as one would expect. But thanks to Alpha's cockiness and Pip's encouragement, they won for like a few seconds before Sunny became unhorny. Thankfully, Hitch curses like a sailor, so we threw a verbal flashbang of forbidden words so they could rush B or escape the tea shop. But the reprieve wouldn't last forever, as Haven used her motherly instincts to come back to her daughters, and the unicorns finally ended their ritual. With a bit of fighting and shouting, the main five were given a chance to connect the two gems that they all got from their endeavors. But, you know, not a lot of big things come easy. I gotta say though, this part with her quivering lips and just overall look of sorrow is so detailed and real. With everyone's hopes down the drain, Sonny makes her way back home with Hitch. I'm just glad the Hitch doesn't put on his whole sheriff's persona and just slams her into a jail cell. What a welcome back home that would be. The apparent realities of the world put Sonny down in a darker place, and you just can't help but feel bad for her. I mean, many of us have had those days where the world beats you down with a reality check of sorts, and the rest of the day is like shit. Or maybe even longer than just the rest of the day. But after some moping around and a few lighting changes, Sonny finally realizes that a third gem exists. And when you think about it, it's kind of weird to have only two combined gems with a large hole in it, or just thinking about how there's three pony types, but only two gems. Though understandably, no one thought that far. I mean, hell, I probably wouldn't. Running to tell Hitch the great news, they finally realized that what Hitch told Sprout not to do, well, he did it anyways. Such a strong dictator to- Maybe not. This time though, instead of Sonny or Hitch convincing anyone, Sprout does it better somehow. Then he sprouts up his version of Liberty Prime to recreate his Hoi 4 fantasy. Even with all the hardships that they've been through, Izzy, Pip, and Zip still want to be friends with Sunny and Hitch. But that doesn't come without a following of Haven and Alpha trailing behind. Haven I'd actually expect because Zip and Pip are her daughters. But I never would have expected Alpha to be concerned for Izzy, even if it's out of concern for the whole Jinx thing. Getting all three gems to put him back together, they rush to put it onto the gem table altar thing. Though I wonder if putting them all back anywhere would have had the same effect. Could have saved some time and a lot of trouble. With Sprout ramming his rammer in Sunny's house, it made things very difficult. Gems flying around, near-death experiences, you know, the normal stuff. But it was all for nothing. Even when they all were put together, nothing happened. Man, she could have saved so much time in the whole lighthouse if she just would have put the gems together right then and there. Later on, when realization kicks in, Sunny gives a small and sweet speech for the crowd to bring everyone together. To contribute, they move some pieces of a picture frame closer to each other. Because of that, true unification blossoms, and the gems finally detect that. A rainbow blows out into the sky, and everyone just got more fruity. Er, magical. They, they got their magic back. And Sunny's got wings and a horn. Who knows if it's permanent or not, but hey. Took Twilight three seasons to become an alicorn, while Sunny just had one movie. I'm not actually complaining or mad about that, god no. In fact, I'm quite happy about it. I just find it funny, and I could only imagine what Twilight's reaction would be to how quick Sunny became an alicorn. Exceptional happiness spreads around, and things are back to how they used to be. In terms of magic being present. Who knows how long it'll take before everyone accepts the others back into their lives. What did I miss? Oh, dude, you missed a lot. Oh, never mind the credits. 
Legit though, every single person who worked on this movie, man, they did a wonderful job with this through and through. And that little bit at the end there, it leaves a smidge of mystery. Maybe they're important side characters for the future, it could be the revival of the Cutie Mark Crusaders, anything is possible. But now for the main thoughts. And before I continue, I don't want this to appear like one opinion is better than another, or my opinion is more important than yours, or vice versa, or anything like that. Heck, I'm more interested in hearing what you all have to say about this movie, or anything else that's on your mind. To put it simply, I don't mean to offend anyone, or look like an asshole. But reiterating, I truly think that this movie is phenomenal. The characters, and even Sprout, are all great. They were played out so damn well by the voice actors, and the animators made the visuals and vocals coincide flawlessly. Sunny is like a smart and avid scholar that just wants to learn more about the world. Hitch is that do-good charmer that you could just have a beer with. Izzy's adorable company that'll make you smile instantly. Zip is that loyal badass that's real with things and leads with confidence. And Pip is that gorgeous influencer that can inspire and teach you all about the crowd. The setting is pretty new and interesting. It leaves a lot to explore and think about, wondering what happened with the old equestrian locations, the advancements made from place to place, it's just new and refreshing. The modern age in comparison to the previous generation is quite a big leap from what it used to be, but it ain't half bad. It allows for more creativity, flexibility, and it's almost in sync with real life in a way. Granted, there are a lot of differences between this and real life, that much is very apparent, but it's more relatable. The models are created adorably, keeping in a good few familiarities while also adding in new features to the body structure. It's a big jump from 2D to 3D animation, but it's a welcome and well-executed change of pace. The story and plot itself is enjoyable and cute in its own manner. It allows people to learn a few things, or just reinforces the ideas if they already know of them. And in a general sense, it's just worth the time watching and re-watching it as well. Now, some argue that the pacing was a bit rushed here and there, and some may say that it's a cliché lesson to learn, but even with those two and maybe a few other critical points, it still doesn't stop this film from being enjoyable. Now, this is obvious, but it's perfectly okay to dislike things. I ain't meaning to say it's wrong to not like what you don't like, but just remember, just taking a lean back and ignoring all the side issues that you may notice, or just by laughing at or with them, can lead to a more pleasing experience. It's kind of like turning off your brain in a sense, turning down logic and reason in turn for enjoyment. This review, if you can even call it that, is linear as balls, I'm sure you all have noticed. Seems more like a recap than it did an actual review. But hey, eventually I'll learn this better as I go, because we all gotta start somewhere. And besides, even with me talking way too damn much, I'm more interested in your thoughts, and I hope to hear what you think on everything. A little different than what we're all used to, but thank you all so much for stopping by, hope you enjoyed this video, and live life to the fullest.